Southeast Conference soccer continues here at BMC Durfee High School as Hilltoppers host the Brockton Boxers for their second meeting here in 2019. Evan Massoud with you for the broadcast, joined today by the guy I've been referencing for over a year behind the camera, Jake Fitzgerald, joining me in the booth today. Jake, I did not know until recently when you finally let me know that you used to play soccer. Uh, Why are you holding out? Well, uh, you know, I'm afraid of the spotlight, Evan. <laughs> Spent so long behind that camera, it's, it's hard to come out in front of it. No, I, I mean, as a kid, I played soccer, you know, up until high school, almost year-round, but, mm -hmm. you know, things changed when we got out here. But I'm excited to be here today to watch, uh, you know, Derby take on a league opponent, Brockton Boxers. For sure. Glad that you're with me for the broadcast. we got Nathan Saucier and Daniel Keating on camera, and we have, what do you know, some rain. I think this is the third event that we've done in a row uh, on Fred TV outside where we've actually had some rain and this is, so it's not pleasant conditions 54 degrees driving mist on the field and gonna get colder as the game goes on well you know it, it depends on how you look at it Evan because some of these guys on the field they might be you know looking forward to some of these slicker conditions and let you know for some of these teenage boys the the rivalry is amped up a little bit with a little bit more um, difficulty on the field sliding around and whatnot <laughs> all right Brockton comes in at 11 and 5 Durfee 4 five and four so again brockton 11 five and oh no ties actually for the broxers um so that's kind of uh an odd situation you normally see a couple ties in there they haven't had one so uh, it's been a really good year for coach herminio for Tato's boxers and uh the, i mentioned this is the second time that Durfee and brockton squared off on the season the first time uh, was a five nothing victory for brockton at their home stadium that was a, probably one of Durfee's Worst losses of the season. Well, I actually, uh, I was talking to assistant coach Eric Gomes. Um, he actually helped me out a lot preparing for this game. He was saying that that game, these guys here, the Derby Hilltop, has been looking forward to getting a second crack at Brockton. Um, he was saying the score was tied 0-0 up until the 60th minute where it kind of started to fall apart. So, you know, we might see things go a different way tonight. The boys can hold on to it. Just another example of how the Final score isn't indicative of how the game was played. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting game notes. Yeah, I wasn't there for that game. We don't typically do the road games. Um, and actually, I haven't seen Tiberio since um, I was out in Dartmouth with Dartmouth Cable doing that game. And that was at the end of September. So it's uh, it's been a quick month of October, to say the yes. least here. <laughs> I can't believe the season's already almost over. This Jerfie's got 18 games on the schedule. So this is game number, um, what do we got, number 16. 14? <clears throat> oh, I'm looking at this, Yeah, so this is game number 14 for Durfee. Uh, they don't have much time left, and at a 4-5-4 four, and four record, oh, and one of the Hilltoppers going down on the wet turf. Like Derek Lopes. Yeah, and Derek Lopes starting today for Nathan Kucher, who's been um, out on injury. He's back, but he's not going to start. Initially, he was going to start, but Coach... Mello making the game time decision that Nathan would not start. One of the spark plugs for the Hilltoppers, so they're definitely missing him. Been a tough go of it for Durfee since that win in Dartmouth. Um, they haven't actually gotten a win. Uh, so it's, it's been a tough go of it. Some tough losses on the road, a tie against BR. So a lot of ties, but they're at the point now where you're kind of in must-win games. And that's never a scenario you want to be in, but that's the reality of the situation. Yeah, it's tough. These guys are young. They're... You know, they like to think they're in a rebuilding year. It's all over the place with the grades. You know. Right. I mean, uh, we've said it earlier this season, it's it's hard when you have to replace all of your starters yes. from a year ago. And that's basically what Coach Mello's had to do. So definitely a rebuilding year for Durfee. But they're not out of it mathematically yet. They can still get into the tournament. Um, they're going to have some work to do, but they can certainly get there. That would be an exciting season to watch if they were able to pull that right. off. It sure would. Let's run down the starters as uh, we get a quick goal kick for Zach Massa. For the Brockton Boxers, we have in goal number one, Vinicius Neves. Number two, Mario Dos Santos. Captain number five, Luis Spinoza, uh, Spinola. Excuse me. Number six, Christian Santos. Number seven, Lucas Fernandes. Number eight, Kevin Barboza. Number 10, Jaheim Neblet. Number 12, also a captain, Eric Brito. Number 14, Giovanni Martins. Number 17, Sergio De Silva. And number 22, the third captain, Derek Brito. And the boxers are led by head coach Herminio Furtado. It's always good to see Coach Furtado. For Durfee, you want to take Durfee? Uh, yeah, so Durfee's got 
I'm not sure on the positions here, so I'll just run down the starters. Uh, right, yep. Zach Massa in goal. He's number 12. Number three, Colin Hargraves. Uh, no Nathan Kucha tonight, as we mentioned earlier, but number six, Brandon Miranda. Number seven, Rafael Oliveira. Followed by eight, Christian Souza, CJ Souza. I've heard the coaches talk about him. Mm -hmm. uh, number nine, uh, that's Nicholas De Silva. Number 14 would be Jake Silva. 17, Paulo Pacheco. 19, for your Hilltoppers, Brian Fernandes. 21, Derek, Ro Ger wow. Derek Lopes. He's the one in for Nathan Kucha. Mm -hmm. And 26, Chris Tabor. Tobar. 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 Yep. And uh, just a quick note again, Nathan, uh, you know, he's not starting, but I think he is going to see some minutes. That's at least the hope. Um, so, again, he's, you know, he's a big player for, for Durfee. Yeah, if you've been watching the broadcast at all, you've heard Evan say that that last name many times, Kucha. He, mm. he often has the ball. He's usually all over the field. <laughs> he's one of the high speed players, and he usually makes a lot of stuff happen. Oh, a little push in the back goes out of play. As we just saw there, Sergio Da Silva all over. Christian Souza. I actually got to meet Christian preseason um, before official preseason started. And in fact, that was a foul. They did give the foul on the little push there. So free kick for Durfee. But uh, yeah, Christian I interviewed at um, Ruben's soccer camp oh, that yes. he had here, the, the academy. So um, got to talk with him. And uh, he was at the time out that particular week of the of the camp for uh, for an injury or playing it cautious. They didn't want to chance any further injury going into the season, but he hasn't had any problems here during the actual season, so that was good. But, no, good kid. It was nice to get to meet him. Um, you know, Ruben told me that, you know, the kids are really it's – a, it's a rigorous camp that they do. Um, I think it was just a two-week camp. It might have even been just a one-week. I forget now. It's been <laughs> two months. <laughs> We've had a lot in two months here in Fall yeah, River. Indeed. And, um, but, yeah, it, they really put them through a lot of training. Like, they, they make you <laughs> not want to be there. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and if you stick it out, that's the signs that you really want to be there and you're working hard. So, and I know Ruben was impressed. And Coach Mello, uh, I'm sure, got a good report because I'm sure he was in touch, right? No, I would you imagine. Know? You know, some mm -hmm. of these, these camps can be quite intensive. It's, oh, yeah. You know. The Brockton-New Bedford games always tend to be the, the chippiest, it seems. And Actually, uh, yeah, I didn't find New Bedford to be that bad this year when we, when we saw them. Um, but some of the New Bedford teams in the past, it, you know, against Durfee, it, it gets really – Was that, it, there's did a we lot cover of, that game? Oh, yeah. We did. That one going way back into the night. Yeah, kind of depressing, too, when you get to the end of October and it's like we're starting with uh, no daylight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Six o'clock game and it's dark. It's dark out. It's all under the lights. Oh, it's cold. I was uh, yeah. know, five minutes late to the broadcast today because I layered up. I wasn't sure what the <laughs> weather was going to be like come 7 o'clock. Oh, I know. We got This is a busy week here on Fred TV. This, this is like crunch time. Any you know, anytime In the fall, it's always end of October. It's crunch time. and So we had field hockey yesterday, Gary. Uh, covered that one for us. I was inside getting highlights of girls volleyball their senior night You'll see those highlights at halftime of this game. We got boys soccer tonight Nothing tomorrow Wednesday, but Thursday football again back at Diamond. They're playing Thursday at 4 So we'll have that game for you and then uh, field hockey has their senior night on Friday We'll have coverage of that um, either highlights or full broadcast. We're actually not at that point yet in terms of a decision, but regardless, uh, there'll be there will be coverage of the senior night ceremony for field hockey. We got uh, Brad Bussin in the booth. Brad, do we know it, soc boys soccer? Have we gotten a date for a senior night yet? It's next Monday. It's the twenty eighth. Yeah. Do you know what time we're doing that? Is that four? Okay. Fluid press box, folks. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so boys soccer doing feel their um, their senior night next week as well. Looking at next Monday, we're told. No sides really had a good opportunity yet, and the couple goal kicks we saw as well were kind of on the ground. They weren't full steam, and I assume that must be attributed to the wet surface and the wet ball. A lot of times things can go wrong. Although there's a solid kick from Zach into the wind. You know, these, this miss, it, it can be a little tricky, but it isn't so bad, um, especially on these turf oh, fields. Oh, it was right in that line. And, you know, the line is a little bit indented a bit. It's yeah. almost got a groove. I thought it was going to stay in.
But pretty much all in midfield right now, no real breaks. Everybody kind of biding their time here in the early goings. Nicholas De Souza, De, De Silva, rather, he gets pushed from behind. That'll draw the free kick. I keep saying I'm going to get binoculars, and I just still haven't. I don't know what I'm waiting for. It would be so much easier to see the numbers. In a <laughs> I mean, seriously, the um, <clears throat> I don't know if I said this once before on the on the broadcast, but you know, I've also had the opportunity to do some games at UMass Dartmouth and uh, over the last year and the, you want to talk about a busy press box so you got you know announcers row and the staff in front so you know PA music uh, stats real-time stats me etc and then behind us you got other college students or other players who maybe are not starting or playing that day they're there with the binoculars and they're caught one's handling offense one's handling defense they're calling out tackle numbers they're calling out who ran the ball it's now you know why it's so much easier, yeah. you know, when you're watching these games on, you know, CBS, on, you know, NFL on CBS or whatever. If you have you know, manpower. Don't think that Jim Nance and Tony Romo are alone in that booth. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not even close. First corner kick of the game. It's going to go to the Hilltoppers. Near side here. You see the flag right on the corner of your screen. Good strong kick going to the far side of the box. Off the head, and it's going to go toward the far sideline. Will it be kept in? It does not stay in. Durfee will have it on the throw. They don't seem to be too physically out, man, but speed might be an issue here. They're going to have to keep up with Brockton. Yeah, you know, Brockton 11-5, and five, that's, that's, that's a great record. You know, that's kind of, you know, Durfee had a tremendous season a year ago, and, that, you know, they were way up at the top of the league, I mean, rather in top, top of the division, really. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they were, if I'm not mistaken, if memory serves right, they were number two last year. They were seeded two yeah. you know, going into the tournament. So did was, they pull Silver Lake again last year, or was it? Well, no, it was. Oh no, it was a it was a, a was Boston it Natick team. or Bedford? Oh, Natick, it, it was Natick. Yes, might have been Natick. And Brockton coming in here, the eleven and five record, and uh, this is just this is their next to last game. They have one more road game, and it's at Burke High School. You know, Brockton again though. They play a lot of the Boston schools. Yeah, they play Zavarian. They play. BC High this year. They played uh, Somerville, so they, their schedule. It's a kind of Metro South, really, and it, and that's you know that's because of kind of where they are. You know, New Bedford and Durfee. We've said this before. They're really kind of down in their own little world here. Bouncing ball in front, hooking kick. Zach oh, Massa with the save. Great save. Mm -hmm. Tracking it the whole way, but it, you know, again, that's why I I really think you know for Brockton, especially you know they always seem to I think have an advantage. And they can be, I think, a tougher opponent than New Bedford. New Bedford, you got the rivalry. That's the historic part of it, the tradition and stuff. But, you know, I look at it and I say, Brockton's playing teams that are just in another world, you know, compared to a lot of the teams on the South Coast here. And that's, you know, nothing against the schools that are here, but yep. it's the truth. You know, Boston is Boston's kind of like the Cape. You know, they, they're feeding them something different there. There's something in the water. <laughs> you know, really, the Cape, like hockey teams down at the Cape, Phenomenal. I mean, they're like semi-pro. It's ridiculous. Yeah. They come here to Driscoll, and, and it's like, holy cow. Well, they're all dressed up. They bags they, match. Right. They look great. You know, that, that's what I mean. So, you know, the Boston teams, there's some really good athletic programs, some of the best in the state in the Boston area. And, you know, Brockton, seeing them, whether they win or lose, you it's, know, it that's beneficial, helps. I think, for them. Because, oh, yeah. they're, you know, Brockton's seeing this really high level of play. Well, that's, you know, they almost got one foot in the door in all the Boston leagues. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes down to crunch time, they're able to just drop back south with everybody else down here. You know, it would be nice if the, if the competition was level throughout. But right. it's, and it's not as if, if Durfee had the competition Brockton has. I think they would be able to hold their own. Oh, for sure. And, and that's kind of that's what I'm getting at is that, you know, you have some conferences like, that, that's what's also kind of strange. Is that, you know, we look at the old, old Colony League. That's no longer, obviously. That was Dartmouth, BR, and Barnstable. They're in the same conference, and there's, they're different divisions. They're not even, so sense. you're facing off against each other to get, you know, to win a conference for a playoff berth. And then you don't even see those opponents in the tournament. That's weird. That's really strange. Yeah, that I, strange. I, I, I can't. I've said it before. I'm so happy that this is the... Set up now. We got the five-team league. I think this is so much better 
for everybody. Yeah, that old Colony League seems almost stranger than the big three was. In a way, yeah. Durfee wants all hands. They're not getting it. Flying in is Jake Silva. Well, it looks like one of the boxes there might have gotten cleated. It's tough. It's going to happen in these games, oh, yeah. especially if you're giving it your all, you know. Yeah, I'm pulling up the uh, tournament. That one down the field it goes. Miranda will let Massa take care of it. it should be cleared back out to the field, I would imagine. Yep, pretty much. Line drive right toward the circle. Back into Brockton play. They're going to have to really find a way to control the ball. Throwing in on the far side. Yeah, we're pulling up the soccer brackets here. So from last year's South D1. D1, not D2. That's stuff we're doing on the phone. So yeah, Durfee was 14-2-2 uh, two and two last year. That's a hell of a record. Here's a chance for the boxers. Cutting off a break. Oh, he just missed the kick off the toes and off to the right. He had that corner, and it sailed. What a great chance for the boxers. Now that's where that's where a little bit of slippery weather will keep you in a game. Right, exactly. You know, <laughs> exactly. And yeah, so Durfee did draw Natick. Natick was the bottom seed, 7-7-2. Seven, seven, and two, And they snuck away with a one nothing win here at Durfee last year in the tournament. That was a real heartbreaker. Let yeah, me tell that you. was a tough game to watch, too, because yep. the, the boys almost looked flat in the second half, which stunk because... Well, you know, even going into the end of their season, they had a such drive. And oh yeah, they were doing well, and it, it kind of just didn't quite make it after the post into the postseason. Yeah, Durfee, you know, it, it was that. You know, those are the type of seasons that you hate to see end one and done because you almost think ah, it shouldn't have happened. You know, um, Brockton was nine six and three last year, so this is a good turnaround for them. Um, you know, those three. Three ties don't even count. Basically, they're they're added to their win column this year, so they're doing you know they're doing well. This is a good place for them to be um, late in the season to have yeah basically twice as many wins as you have losses. That's always a good thing to shoot for. Um, it looks like Brockton may be in a similar situation to Durfee. It, mm. Is this year though they're going to graduate eight starters, thirteen seniors. Yeah, the bulk of their team is uh, upperclassmen. Yeah, that's that's the experience level, and that's that's kind of what we saw last year from Durfee, and that's that's why you know it made last year's loss that much more difficult, you know, because these guys knew they had the chance, and coach had said it all year, they had the chance to do something special last year, and I think the same could be said for boys volleyball too. Brendan Kelly oh. had an amazing team last year, and it you know a five set, I don't want to say fluke, but. No, a loss to Taunton in the playoffs that should not have happened. You know, that was that was a real tough break for Durfee last year. So that's another one in five. Oh, yeah, of course. Boys, five sets. Five that goes sets, without saying. All the way through. <laughs> that goes without saying. Oh, my gosh. There's a trip there on the backside. Rafael Oliveira went down. Pass in front. Still going with it. Hilltopper's going to clear it out. Great job. Uh, I believe that was Brandon Miranda on the clear. That's uh, one of the players I had, I had heard about when I talked to Eric Gomes, assistant oh. coach. My boy. And the whistle blown as Oliveira gets tagged with a foul right around the 20-yard line, just outside the box. Dangerous spot to play there. <laughs> yeah, he says Brandon Miranda, number six. He's a big man in the middle. He's a big defensive guy stopping the big plays. And hopefully he'll come up with something big tonight. Almost halfway through the first half, and we'll have a free kick here. It's going to be Eric Brito, number 12. Left-handed kicker right to the box and right into the hands of Massa, who quickly throws it away. He's got a good throw, too. Massa's really a great goalie for Durfee. He's done a great job. A little bit of a break here. Mm -hmm. Kicked up ahead. Really quick speed for the Hilltoppers, but it'll be scooped up by Nevs. They just got to keep Durfee. attacking like that. So senior night for the boys. We're getting word from athletic director Brad Buston that it'll be a 6 p.m. game next Monday against Old Rochester. It's a good matchup for, for senior night. Uh, mm. 
Last I can't remember the last time we played Old Rochester for, uh, for soccer. Did we I play actually, them last year? Uh, I don't know really? if we played them last year. But I don't remember playing them last year. Definitely played them two years ago. Um, remember Neil and Nier scored three, maybe two goals. It was like a 6-0 oh, victory. Oh, you're right. It was a big you're game. You're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now that you say that. Yeah, so it's, a, it's usually a good matchup for these guys. Yeah, Old Rochester has, has a good program for, yeah. for athletics in general. They, they always have some good teams. Um, now the box are going down to the turf. That was De Silva. Well, next Monday, uh, I'll, I'll spill the beans. I'm actually going to be at a concert. What else is new? Yes. Seems to be every time I miss something, it's going to be at a concert. So Who are you seeing this time? Fleetwood Mac. Ooh. Well, we were supposed to see them back in April, but um, I think Stevie Nicks got the flu toward the That's end of the right. tour. I recall that, actually. Yep. And... Um, I, you know, I wasn't going to, honestly, I've seen them before. I mean, they, they're really, they're good. Um, but I, I wasn't going to go because I was really ticked off with the Lindsey Buckingham situation. Because he's, to me, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know Mick Fleetwood's the drummer and, and whatnot. And he kind of glues it together with John McVie on bass. But Lindsey's the only one who sings every song and stays on the stage for every song. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you, we, every, anybody who knows Fleetwood Mac knows the story. They're a toxic band. <laughs> that's that's the best way to describe it. And uh, but the two new guys, yeah, they got a nice sound. And uh, I said, well, what the heck? The tickets are like fifty bucks. I said, Wait, what the heck? You can't go wrong with that. And it'll be a good. It'll be two hour, two and a half hours of music. So yeah, and I'm sure Miss Nix will put on a good performance. Yeah, Stevie is. I'll tell you, that woman doesn't age. It's unbelievable. Yeah. She doesn't age. <laughs> she really doesn't. It's it's so impressive. Um, only female. Here's your musical stat as the Hilltoppers may have a little break here. That's Kucher into the game. Oh. Sends it to the uprights and no good. And they just got to keep attacking like that. Mm -hmm. They'll finally get something a little closer to the net and maybe inside. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, Steve, getting back to what I was going to say is that she's the only female artist to be inducted to the Hall of Fame, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame twice. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Oh, she, twice? Oh, yep, right, I thought at, you were going to say in, at in all. In the band as, is, with Fleetwood Mac, which was uh, late 90s when they first got back together. And then as a solo artist this year. No kidding. Yeah. That's really impressive. That is. Very impressive. You know, so anyway, so I'm sure it'll be a good show regardless. Um, I'll miss seeing Lindsey Buckingham on the stage. He, you know, he's a very underrated guitarist. He's actually one of my favorites. Very underrated. Um, so we'll miss seeing him, but I'm sure it'll be a good show. And we'll coordinate. We'll make sure that we got some coverage. Some footage. Maybe, maybe you can Monday get some. Night. Maybe you can fill in there and get some. Get the ceremony for us we'll if you're if you're can. around, or we'll get the guys here, Daniel or Nathan, to. We'll make it work. We did not have that game. Folks, I'm not just adding it in. We didn't actually have that game for broadcast on the schedule, but we'll add it in for at least for the pregame ceremony so we can have that all on tape for all the parents and stuff. So we'll make sure we have that for you. And then uh, actually next Tuesday as well, um, weather permitting, Diamond Regional. It's their last home game. They're playing Fairhaven. And uh, the boys, the Bengals are... They're, they're heading into the tournament. They, they have, we mentioned it before, they've had a tremendous fall. Now, they've been outstanding. Are we going to see a Derby diamond game? No. Hmm. They do play. Oh, yeah. Well, they are playing. Uh, we don't have that one on the oh, schedule. Oh, not right on now. the schedule, yeah. No, not no, at the I'm moment. I'm sorry, I just meant in the, in the regular gameplay. Yeah, my bad. Game no, play, yeah. they are. They're actually go, uh, we're going to Diamond on Wednesday, I believe. They're, Diamond's got the home game, Brad? Yeah, yeah. Diamond's got that home game. We didn't have it on the schedule because we actually had something else on the schedule that night, so we weren't able to to cover that one. Yeah, so. that was one of the games when I asked uh, when I when I spoke with Coach Gomes if, if there were any games he would like back or anything that he's ex excited for. And he, yeah, he, he he's really looking forward to getting a crack at Diamond. Um, mm -hmm. As you as you know, we we've covered Diamond a little bit this year, and mm -hmm. they, they look well, they play well, and I believe their record reflects that. And, oh yeah, uh, they've been really impressive. Like we're talking wins by. A number of goals, not just one nothing here, two to one there. I mean, they've been really good. Tumbling down is to Silver, who seems to have spent more time on the turf than he has on his feet. <laughs> Seriously, he's been on the ground a lot here. Gets up, though, no worse for wear. Yeah. We're already past the halfway mark here in the first half. Just over 16 minutes left to play, and we're still scoreless here at Mac Aldrich Field. Another one on, on the ground. Yeah, and again, I, I think that I would assume that the wet field is probably not helping. Not able to really dig the cleats in. 
Yeah, we mentioned it about Diamond Soft, uh, Diamond uh, Soccer, rather, excuse me, is this Do, Do Silva goes back down to the turf. <laughs> Diamond. I told you they like to slide that's around. That's what I'm talking about, I know. Diamond, 11 0 and 2. 11 0 and 2. Yeah, that's, that's no joke. And I'm telling you, you know, we talk about scores here. Uh, let, we'll just run down a few. 4 0, 3 1, 7 0, 7 3, 6 2. They tied Durfee 2 2, one of the two ties. Then nine to one, seven to three, eight nothing. That was the Conley game we covered. Yep. Five nothing. I mean, they're <laughs> they're putting up some crooked numbers that you just don't normally see in soccer. That one sent towards the box off the head, bouncing ball in oh front, no. and the boxers are going to take oh, the lead stinks. on Massa's. Massa went down. It got by him. Thought he made the initial save. Brockton going to grab the early lead. Yeah, that's a tough pill to swallow right there, you know. Uh, is that off a, off a free kick into the box? That was off the free kick into the box. Massa went down, couldn't recover, and an easy header right into the net. And, you know, that's that's what happens sometimes. Little fluke goals. And, again, you know, maybe, maybe the wet ball, not as easy to handle or get a handle on. Maybe. It took the bounce. And that was the end of it. So one nothing. Brockton here. Well, what Durfee really needs right now is to just stay in this game, be aggressive, get on these boxers here, mm -hmm. and just make sure they don't let this next 14 minutes get away from them because it's going to be really hard to come back from that after a halftime break. Exactly. Kucher there had sent that one toward the box, scooped up by Neves. And he's still down in there. Kucher's a senior this year. Again, definitely one of the spark plugs for the Hilltoppers. It'll be one that they'll miss next year for sure. Pass up from uh, Santos. And now we're going all the way to the far side. Yeah, Brockton sending it back to the defenders. Just pinballing it back and forth. Right, it's a keep away. <laughs> Now sending it down the field, off the head and toward the box. It's a foot race. Look at the speed on the, oh, and there's a push in the back too. But tremendous speed on that far side for the boxers forward. Well, I wish I could see his number. There. I apologize. I can't see his number through the mist here. But that was well orchestrated. That's yeah. kind of what you want to do. Send it up and then go get it. You yeah. know, it's, it's, it's it, you talk, we talk about that in hockey, too. Send it to the corner, dump it in the corner, and then go, you know. You know, they had a little bit of distraction going on mm -hmm. over here, just bobbing the ball, setting up the play they wanted, and then a tremendous kick from that defender who sent that ball almost directly into where he needed it. Oh, another good give and go by Brockton. They're moving around real well now. Durfee's going to have to get a... Yeah. Well, get some more ball time, get some more time with control of the ball, slow down Brockton here. Well, when you play with a lead, you play with more confidence because you got that cushion. You have the advantage. Mm -hmm. And Brockton's had great ball control through this whole first half um, despite, again, a very wet field. You can tell, folks, when it's really wet because it's starting to get that sheen, like reflecting light, and, and that's what we got now. The mist is picking up even more. Looks like almost clouds going across the field, but it's actually all kind of rain shields. That one heading towards the sideline and out of play. So yeah, just kind of a nasty night out there. And but Brockton definitely handling it a little better than Durfee. We got an injured player on the field for the Hilltoppers. I think that's Rafael Oliveira. Oh, no, it's not, nope. As Rafael Oliveira walks over to the player on the ground. I think that's Lopes, that's number 21. That's uh, Derek, Derek Lopes. Lopes. He's down on the ground at the moment. Stretching out the leg. Might have gotten caught or slipped. The old maybe. soccer cramp, little, maybe. Oh, that could, could be the cramp as well. Well, while he's being tended to, we will step aside. Got 11 minutes, 51 seconds to play in the first half. one nothing Brockton. The conclusion of the first half next on Fred TV. Welcome back to Mac Aldridge Field. Derek Lopes got up. Under his own power, took the golf cart off the field with our trainer, Kelly Mahoney. And uh, I think you may be right, Jake. Um, 
I, I think it might be cramps. Well, Derek yeah, Cramp Derek Wilkes is our player coming in for Nathan Kucha. Well, he was the starter for he Nathan, was. but he stayed out there. Another one lofted toward the box, and it's going to go out of play. But I saw Lopes when he got up. He was actually grabbing like his it's thigh like area. Hamstring yeah, almost. hamstring area, and I think maybe he might have just been cramping up. Because I didn't see a collision. I mean, the ball was off to the side, but then he was just kind of sitting on the ground. Like he wasn't, there was nobody near him. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to venture to say it might have been that. It's, uh, you know, it happens, especially in some oh, of these yeah. high strong games, these guys running around. And, uh, you know, we are, we are dealing with kids in high school here, their nutrition and, uh, I don't want to say hygiene, but their hydration levels probably mm -hmm. aren't, you know, that of a professional athlete. So. Mm -hmm. That might have been off. I thought that might have been off the hands. That definitely looked like <laughs> a handball to me, but I. Miranda. I'm going to let him play. What hand? You know? Yeah. <laughs> could be seeing something on the field I'm not seeing up here. So. I know. I mean, you know, we had the you know New York Jets quarterback throwing a ghost the other night, you know, Monday night football against the Pats. So we could be seeing a fake hand. Who knows? I, that was an that incredible was game. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't just tell Donald to stop throwing the ball. Thank you. We need to. I, I mean, said that. Why do we keep keep stopping the <laughs> clock, guys? You know, let's let's let the game end. Well, to be quite honest with you, and then to, to Belichick's credit, you know, the Jets going to play the game of, oh, we're not going to give them the delay of game penalty, so he's got more room. So what do the Pats do? False start. They false start it with uh, with with one second left. Yeah, they took exactly. Yeah. They took 90 yeah, seconds off the clock. And the best part was Bill Belichick's grinning about it. You know, I mean, I was waiting for him to do it again. That is the first time I've never seen that. Photograph the man smiling as well. uh, during the game. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. He's happy as could be. Right. Well, I mean, seriously, you know, I, I, he plays the game till the end, and you know it. That was a oh, handball, a too. And oh, is, there, is there a whistle or no? I think that was an offsides call. Well, no, no they maybe keep, not. they're letting him play. But I'm telling you, Oliveira's hand was out there, and the ball went down. So I think that's two handballs that Durfee may have gotten away with. But seriously, yeah, that Pats game, I mean, utter domination. I mean, the Jets are, you know, the Jets are the Jets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, really. But even so, uh, the, the defensive performances that we've seen through the first seven weeks of the Patriots, it's like, I mean, this is making – me think of 2003 when they won their second Super Bowl because well, that defense that year had three shutouts. They were just absolutely nasty. They were unbelievable. Well, so here's where I've sinned. Where I, this was the first uh, Patriots game I've witnessed this mm -hmm. year. Oh, um, really? Well, I mean, they weren't playing very good teams, and the weather's been great. And, and to be mm -hmm. honest, I'd rather be outside than to watch a blowout after. Well, true. My entire life, the Patriots have been good. I don't mind missing a game. Sure. Um, so the whole pregame show last night, they're talking about how terrible the Pats' offense is, mm -hmm. and, and how you know they can't get they can't get it going, and they don't have a you know a running back. And to me, they're six and zero. I'm thinking this is a regular Patriots offense. Mm -hmm. and come to find out, the defense. It's the defense. It's incredible. The defense is incredible. McCourty's got now five picks in seven games. That's, yeah, that's McCourty. insane. Four picks last night. It's, it's just, yeah, it's amazing. Um, you know, what, but, yeah, all, all the writers were saying pregame that, uh, oh, you know, it's, it's going to be a game. You know, the Pats are going to win it, but it'll be one possession, and I'm sitting there. Yeah, it's 17 to nothing with 10 seconds to play in the first quarter. What are you talking about? What are you thinking? So, yeah, it was just total. Down. And you know what I'm most impressed about, too, this year, which is not normally the case, but how many fans the Pats have had on the road this year. Oh, yeah. It was That's up. not normal for football. Baseball, yes. Red Sox Nation is all over the country. I mean, we go to Anaheim to play the Angels, and it might as well be Fenway West. You go to Tampa Bay, it's Fenway South. I mean, I'm not kidding. It, the Sox fans, it's just incredible how well the Red Sox travel. But now we look at the Pats. They have been the Pats fans are traveling. No, I wonder. They're, if not, that's, they're not afraid anymore. I guess I don't know. Well, I wonder if that's Pats fans traveling, and I hope it isn't the second one. But perhaps the Patriots are taking on this like Yankee level. Uh, I have yeah. Who knows? They're just picking up fans all over. Because I mean, we all know Yankee fans. <laughs> and <laughs> I hope Chief Lynch is not watching. <laughs> oh, Nathan's yes, a Yankees. Oh, come on. Oh, all right. I was going to say. Are you saying Daniel's a Yankees fan? <laughs> no, no. 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 Oh, you gave us a look like we were just <laughs> talking about your team. By the way, the Yankees are playing golf this week while the Astros are in the World Series. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great series, though. I have to tell you. That was a good series. That Ooh, one. Another attempt there. Mm -hmm. 
I got to tell you, though, you know, Houston's a great team. And the Yankees were a great team this year. And they deserved to both be in the ALCS. I think Houston was the better team. I'm glad that they did beat the Yankees. But I am rooting for the Nationals because I think the Nationals pitching staff is just outstanding. You know, we look at Washington. Two of the guys were on the Detroit Tigers when the Sox played them in the ALCS in 2013. That was Annabelle Sanchez, a former Sox prospect, and uh, Scherzer. I mean, they, their pitching is really great. They, they, they just have steamrolled over everybody in the first two rounds. Ball. Of course. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm actually kind of excited for the World Series. I probably won't watch much of it because the, the games are just long and they're very late, you know. And it's, I mean, it was even tough watching the Sox last year. It was fun. But, I mean, some of the games just go so late. Who's playing Houston? The Washington Nationals. Oh, the Nationals yeah. versus Houston. Yeah, I, th I really think it's going to be a good series. As you can tell, I'm not very up on my baseball either. Yeah, I, I had I haven't really followed much until the the league championship series. I love playing I just baseball. Haven't. I just I don't watch it very often. Well, wow, that was a late whistle. If there ever, I mean, there was like a three count before they called the free kick after Saunders got taken out. Oh, is that what the call was? Yeah, I wasn't even sure. He what went the call tumbling was. down, and that was like literally like three or four seconds. Then they finally blew the whistle. That was a little bit late. Or maybe one, it might have been actually it could have been Jake Silva who's kicking it now. Is Saunders on the field? Uh, no, I don't see him. See. No, he's not. No, I, I, I guess I thought I saw a five. I'm going to assume it might have been Silva who went tumbling. Down. Was, yeah, 14 there. Pretty similar. Five minutes to play here in the first half. one nothing Brockton still here on Fred TV, and they just had another great chance. Corner kick, another kick that went through the uprights as well. Yeah. They've really controlled this first half. You know, we've digressed on a couple things, but it keeps it fun. We, uh, but seriously, Brockton's really controlled this first half. That was kept in, centering pass, and Moss has got to make a play on it. What a job in that corner. Yeah, just, just the amount of domination Brockton has in the midfield. And then they're, they're constantly sending the ball across the field, across the net, into the box. Uh, Derby wants to make anything happen. I, I think, you know, they don't even need a goal at this point. They just need a handful of shots on net to improve morale before they get to halftime. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and on that far side there, I'm waiting to see him turn his back. So that was number eight, Kevin Barboza, midfielder. He's the one who just raced all the way to the corner and was able to redirect that about 110 degrees towards the center for that, for that shot on net. It was a weak shot, but still, it was still a shot on net. I mean, that's... That's great hustle there, and uh, Barboza, a junior, very tall, very fast. Yeah, when that aggression helps, you know, you finally uh -huh. get to the ball. That you know, one you going can, out can beat your opponents in more ways than one. In more ways than one, and uh, you know, if you if you can beat somebody in the middle of the game, it's a, it's a lot easier to beat them at the end. Yeah, speed thrills. Remember, um, remember the name Maya Parker from Diamond? I do not. Yeah, no. she played basketball. She missed most of. Her senior year due to injury. How recent was this? Mm, about a year or two. Okay. Short player. She was one of the quickest on the court. And she also was on the soccer team. And she was unbelievable on the soccer team as well. Um, and and it, speed in this kind of a game where you have open field, speed thrills. It really does. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to control the ball, sure. But if you can outrun your opponent, and we've seen that a few times, either Durfee doing it or opponents doing it to Durfee where, you know, you're in a foot race to the ball and you just see one guy just reeling in the other. I mean, that's really exciting to see that. It's like an all-out sprint, yeah. you know. And you being, you know, on the track, coaching track, I mean, you yeah, you know what it's about. You know how exciting sprinting is, of course. Well, <laughs> even, even I mean, at least in soccer, it's, it's an 80-minute game and, mm -hmm. and it's hard to spend 80 minutes on, you know, on somebody's heels or, or somebody just two steps ahead of you. Oh, look at this setup. Oh. oh, what a sweet goal as the boxers grab their second and it's a fist five. pump. Yeah, Louis, Louis Spinola. Yep, Louis Spinola with an incredible feed from his midfielder. And he beat both defenders, played it on side, and then he beat Massa. 2 nothing Brockton with two minutes to play here in the first half. And it's, that's exactly what you said you don't want to happen no. if you're the Hilltoppers. Already down one nothing on kind of a fluke goal. And now you're going to be down 2 nothing to start it's just the uh, second half. Saw in the wound right before you're going to leave the field. It's, it's, it's 
tough, especially in a game like soccer that's so low scoring to come back from something like that early on in the game. I mean, luckily they have the time to bat a lot of it, but. Yeah, that was uh, even hearing uh, Brad Buston here saying that one of the nicest passes. He's right. That was absolutely fantastic, so the feed. Threaded right two, three, mm -hmm. three or four defenders. Yeah, and you really can't do it much better than that. I mean, it's the same type of deal, just the Brockton's control in the middle of the field is allowing them to just feed that ball wherever they need to go. And Free kick going towards the net. It's batted away almost like a setter in volleyball. Nevs with the two-handed flick. And it goes out of play. Brockton going to throw in. It'll be to Silva. So that was a, actually a really good kick uh, toward the net on the free kick. A long kick, trackable, but still it was in a good spot. It was a playable ball. Yeah. And we might see another one here. I mean, Brockton's just going to really want to slow the game down now, get out of this half. Uh, you can see uh, Lewis Spinola just on that throw in telling telling his teammates to just right. ease things off here. They, they just got to bide their time. But Durfee's in the opposite position. They, they really got to use this two minutes to their advantage or whatever's left of it. Yeah, we haven't had too much stop time here in the first half, so I venture to say probably within 60 seconds we'll be done, if not maybe even less than that. We had a couple of free free kicks early in the half, but uh, you know after that it's a lot of smooth play. Unfortunately, that's almost when Brockton started to take hold uh, and really get control of this game at the same time. Coming toward the near side. Out of play it goes. It'll be Durfee ball. Oh, that was a nice, yeah. a nice kick. I wish it was, you know, going forward with a, a more extended play there. Yeah, Tobar stuck the heel out. Kind of a backwards kick, you know? Yeah, you get it right off the heel. You can nick it. Mm -hmm. Redirect it almost like in uh, hockey. Nobody was home, and now Brockton just playing some keep away. Yeah. And there's the half. There is the half. So the boxers with a 2 0 advantage after 40 minutes here on Fred TV. One and a half games, Jerfy has not been able to score against this tough boxers team here in 2019. Will the second half allow Durfee to break the ice? We shall see. In the meantime, I'm going to take you inside the field house right now. You see some footage right now on your screen as the Lady Hill Toppers, who are playoff bound, hosted Conley on Monday and uh, had their senior night. So we're going to turn it over to public address announcer and assistant coach Chris Policino, who was nice enough to hold our mic as well. So we'll turn it over to him. And uh, so enjoy the senior night ceremony and some highlights. We'll be back with the second half right after that. Good evening and welcome to BMC Durfee High School. We are here at the Thomas Skip Karen basketball court in the Luke Urban Fieldhouse for this non-league volleyball game between the Lady Cougars of Bishop Conley and your Durfee Hilltoppers. As always, we are pleased to welcome you this evening to Durfee High School. Good sportsmanship is one of the primary goals of interscholastic athletic programs. Our student athletes recognize that judgment calls are made in good faith and they must abide by the decisions of the officials. Spectators can support their interscholastic program by refraining from derogatory remarks or cheers. We hope that you will enjoy the game and that you support all participants in a positive, sportsmanlike manner. Now let's meet tonight's starting lineups. For your Cougars, we have number five, Madison Amaral. Number 13, Samantha Vivaris. Number 11, Ashley Patin. Number three, Autumn Cabral. Number two, Caroline O'Donnell. Number one, Abby Schnur. And number seven, Alina Strozik. All right, and for your Durfee Hilltoppers, we have number 10, junior, Captain Emma Resendiz. We have number two, junior, Michaela Malay. And number five, junior, Sophie McDonnell. All right, tonight we are here to 
Where do we go? We are here to celebrate our senior uh, members who have committed the last four years of their uh, school year of participating in girls volleyball. Okay, so we're going to announce them next. Uh, starting with uh, Bishop Conley. All right, we have number five, Madison Amaral. Right. Congratulations. All right, for your Durfee Hilltoppers, we have number three, Laura McGlary. All right, number seven, Leticia Cavallo. Number 11, Valeria Lamas. Number 12, Jasmine Regar. And last but not least, your captain, number 14, Adriana Fernandez. Thank you, girls. Good job. Good luck. Congratulations. Hello, I'm Kelly Susie Young, Election Commissioner for the City of Fall River. You will notice some changes at the polls on November 5th. State-of-the-art voting machines will be used for the November 5th election. These are the same machines we used in the September preliminary election. You will see blank ovals on the ballot. Please, completely fill in the oval next to the name of the candidates of your choice. Most municipalities in Massachusetts use the DS-200 system. Now we do too. Training sessions are available upon request. Please, make time to vote. It is your civic duty. We hope to see you at the polls on November 5th. If you have any questions, our poll workers will be happy to help. Thank you. Welcome back to Durfee High School. Evan Massoud and Jake Fitzgerald with you on FRED TV. Southeast Conference Boys Soccer. Brockton in town squaring off against Durfee. The second meeting of the season between these two schools. And Brockton has outscored Durfee in three halves. Seven to nothing this season in the combined two games. Durfee needs to break the ice, Jake. And they need to do it early here in the second half. Yeah, they're going to have to come out and have to, you know, just attack the ball. To keep good pressure on Brockton, keep the heat up, and, and really have to go to the ball. Don't let the ball come to them. They're going to have to go to the ball, um, which, you know, it sounds almost foolish, but if you, you got a guy standing there, he's waiting for a pass to come to him, you got to take those steps, be ambitious, get the game moving. You not, need to change this tempo into a rhythm that's, that's better for Durfee than Brockton. And that's, that's kind of been the challenge here. Now, the wind is blowing from the north uh, down the field, and that's why you just saw the... The drop kick here from uh, from Neves did not get very far, and some of Massa's kicks did not get very far either. You're getting kicking into the wind and into the mist, into the driving mist. So that's slowing the ball up. Durfee will have the wind at their back here in the second half. The problem is, is to your point, the aggressiveness getting to the ball and being able to sustain, to sustain anything on offense has been incredibly challenging. Brockton's done a really good job at buttoning up, buttoning up the middle of the field and... Uh, the defensive area. Yeah, they're just smothering them all mm -hmm. over the field. They're, they're on top of them. You know, they're getting breakaways. They're, they're making long kicks. Well, maybe not so much getting breakaways, but they're they're making they're making breaks toward the net. Yeah, they've had they've had very impressive ball control. And on a yeah. wet surface, on a really crappy night. I mean, it, it's really nasty out there. This is you know, it's been you know, they're playing to the feet. They're finding their teammates. Oh, here's, oh, here's a chance. Oh, oh, and it's blocked. Tremendous defense backing up the goalie. But here's a second sh shot at it. This is what Durfee needs. They need mm -hmm. to stay on it and just get, just like basketball, they need to get right. boards and they need to get the ball in the net. That was Lucas Fernandez who just denied the Hilltoppers their first goal of the night and what should have been their first goal of the night. A great defensive play, yep. too. Thank Lucas, was Lucas Fernandez you said? Lucas Fernandez, number seven. Right place in the right time yep. there, just doing his job. Actually, you know, I, I'm going to take that back. Excuse me. I saw it. It looked like seven. Oh, no, I don't think I want to say, is it number two? 
Oh, no, it was number seven. Okay, because he's a forward, so kind of strange that he's playing back. He is a forward on the uh, roster. Typically, you know, he'd be up the field. That's why I thought maybe it, I thought maybe the two or the seven was a two because mm -hmm. Dos Santos is a defender for Brockton. But nonetheless, it was Fernandes, and that was the save of the game right there, in my opinion. That yeah. was fantastic. Definitely. Um, maybe, you know, maybe uh, Coach Vitato made some, made some uh, changes specific for Durfee's. Uh, mm -hmm. Durfee's lineup. Sometimes you see that some guys, a, a lot of midfielders in particular, either come out of playing forward or right. playing defense and go into playing midfield. They're usually outsized mm -hmm. for defense or, or too big for um, the forward position. They find themselves in midfield, but it also gives them the versatility to move all over the place. Yeah, that's like a coach's dream right there. I mean, we talk about baseball, five tool players. You know, you can, you can hit, you can run, you can field, you got a strong arm. I mean, that if you can do it all in any sport, yeah, you're going to get used. That's for sure. And we see it with football all the time. The, some of the best players on the field, they're playing defense and offense. Well, yeah, look at Jay Hall. He's, uh, yeah, there's he's, a good he's example. He's on the field constantly, mm -hmm. you know. Lucas Roque. Yeah, another one. A couple years ago. I mean, he was like a defensive leader, and yet he was one of their offensive spark plugs, too. Mm -hmm. You know, he was he was a great hilltopper. He, yeah. he had a good career. That's a Vanilton Xavier, number nine. Thought he was going to have a chance at it there. Well, that's that. That Brendan Miranda plugging up the middle there. It is. That stopper. Ooh, loose position. ball, a collision with Massa. And you're right, though. Miranda has had a great game, Jake. Didn't mean to cut you off. No problem. Um, well, and that was just what I was talking about right there is attacking the ball. Not, you know, not being on your heels during this game, getting to the ball. Yeah, Massa came out at it. He's paid the price a couple times tonight. Yeah, and what you're saying earlier about uh, the, you know, having a player that can go all over the place. My my experience in soccer, and it actually kind of feel like it not it counted against me, but at least the way I thought of it, because you never get to start when you're a util utility player, right? Because you got to see, you know, see how where you're needed. So, you know, I, I spent a lot of time in the first 10, 15 minutes of the game on the bench, and unfortunately, you know, it affected. You know, I thought I was a, wasn't a, as good a soccer player for it. Right. But, but in reality, you know, it was, it was the versatility that, that kept me off the field in the starting minutes. But, you know, they might need you somewhere else, and it's, it's really what you need for the team. Right. All right. As a team sport, you got ten guys on the field and one protecting your net. So it's, it's, it's probably one of the busiest on the field out of any sport, really, because you're all spread out. Everyone's running. At least with football, you gotta, you got to pause in between, and you're lining up for a play. Not to say that there's not a lot happening, but... With soccer, I mean, there's just you got guys all over a field. Well, you know, even from a, a filming point of view, I was mm -hmm. telling you know Danny and Nathan they first started with us this year. Like, good pass up ahead. Football games are a cakewalk. You know, they really you are. Got, you got ten seconds per play, mm -hmm. maybe, and then you got thirty seconds in between. You know, they're not not a lot of movement. Soccer, on the other hand, these guys are all over the place. The yep. ball moves in three dimensions. Um, I think the only thing worse than soccer is probably hockey, and I think, part, and part of it's because of Driscoll. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> um, you know, even softball and baseball, I mean, it's tricky at times depending on the situation. But there's a lot of dead time in yes. between pitches. You know, baseball more, of course, more so than than softball. But the speed of the game, it just you get it yeah. in soccer, you get it, it even more in hockey. Mm -hmm. um, the speed of volleyball. Is is almost similar, but at least it's kind of just a, you're ping ponging back and forth. Right. Yeah. You, you don't know. have a field like this, where the ball can just change directions a lot, a lot quicker, like that. That's gonna drop Ooh. right in front of Hargraves. Gonna be turning it around. Nice job. First year starter, Colin Hargraves. He's doing well, and he's, mm -hmm. a, he's a little outsized over in that position on, on number nine from New Bedford there. Uh, yeah. Uh, Brockton. Brockton. Yeah, Xavier. Xavier, yeah, okay. But, um, yeah, Hargraves was one. You know, I mentioned, I, I referenced uh, the summer camp, the, oh, the yes. academy, and Colin was one of the players that was highly talked about in terms of, uh, you know, his commitment. He had improved a lot from his freshman year, and, uh, the thought was that he'd see some starting time, and he's started almost every game this season. Ooh. That one's going to skip by to the right and go 
out of play. But still, it's, it's another opportunity. And that's really what Derfy needs right now, is just some more opportunities. Yeah, they're not getting them. It's, uh, it's Brockton creating those chances for themselves, and now they got a corner kick here. Yeah, Derfy's dealing with some kind of iron curtain back here around the, you know, the, what would be the 30-yard line on the football field. They just can't seem to crack it. Headed out of the box, and a nice job by Tobar to send it toward the circle, and his teammate there, Brian Fernandes, who has it skipped by. It'll be a foot race. It goes out of play. Should be Brockton ball. And it is. Yep. How strict are they about where you throw in? Because, like, you know, the ball went out about 10 yards further down the field, and you just saw Danny Rezendi throw it in from further up. Like, I don't know. It's, I feel like it depends on the officials. Some of them tend to be – is that really what it comes now, down to? It, yeah, it is fairly subjective. Um because that wasn't close. And the, the thing is, too, is a lot of these a lot of these fish officials aren't they aren't going to nitpick too much. I mean, five yards in a soccer game is really only going to get you so far. It's not so much like five yards in a football game where you might be getting yourself a whole new set of downs. Okay. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Um, or like in a free kick, they're going to be a little more specific. They, there, yeah, right? they are fairly specific yeah. with free kicks. I, I have seen some some referees really. Oh, uh, what a save from Massa! That was going in for number three, and he stuck the hand out. And he was able to tip it out of play. Excellent play. That's why Coach Gomes calls Zach Massa the best goalie in the Southern Conference. Um, he really is good. He's not the tallest, but I'll tell you, he can get up the ladder and evidence of it right there. That was one heck of a save. That took a goal off the board. I mean, you know, for, for a player who I, I'm not sure if he played soccer before high school, but I know he just recently started playing goalie. Mm -hmm. he's, he's really starting to fit into that position. It will result in a corner kick for the boxers as we roll up on the 30-minute mark. So 10 minutes gone here in this second half. Low kick. Ooh. Bouncer handball in the box. That's brutal. That is brutal. That's not good. That's going to cost, yep. cost Massa his last save. You know, the, the great play by Massa might just be erased here. Yeah. That was Miranda, I think. Either Miranda or Souza. I can't tell if it's a six or an eight. I think it was. I think that's eight. Yeah, that was yeah. Souza. So it's a penalty kick. Like we just, you just said it, Massa, with the great save. And now you know this. These are 50-50. It really could go either yeah. way on penalty kicks. You know, and that that sinks there for uh, Christian uh, C J Souza. He was one of the guys that the coaches were singing his praise. Yeah, He's really coming along. He's a great player. I think that was the you spoke about him earlier mm -hmm. at the camp. You know, and that that's. That's tough. You kind of got to brush it off. You know, these things happen. It's unfortunate it happened in the box. And it's good. Mm -hmm. Massa went left. He was leaning that way. And it is 3-0 Brockton. And I believe that was Vanilton Xavier who picked up the goal number nine. And now he'll come out. So 3-0 boxers on the penalty kick. And that's a shame because, again, Massa just seconds ago had... One of the best saves of this whole game. Yeah, I mean, you 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 had uh, the Brockton boxer number uh, number eight. No, uh, seven. Lucas yeah, Fernandes, Fernandes with the save of the night, but I, I think Massa was competing for it there. Oh yeah, I mean he he clearly took a goal off the board. Yes. So anytime you legitimate, you know, you, you really take one off. I mean, we're not talking like just oh I scooped it. No, we're talking oh. like you know full on, it was going in yeah. type save. Those are where you you get to. Those are the ones that you get to say, oh, wow, yeah, that, that might have been the save of the night. It would have been one of those baseball glove over the over the fence type moments. Right, a gold glove award. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Web gem as ESPN used to. How did I miss baseball tonight? I have to tell you. You know, I, I don't watch as much baseball as I, as I used to. Um, but, man, you know, back in, like, 04, 05, 06, when it was, like, the legit crew, too. Carl Ravage, you know, John Crock, Tim Kirchner. Harold Reynolds, when he was still there, before he went to MLB Network, you know, that, that crew was just awesome to watch every night. I, you know, the Sox, the games weren't that long anymore, you know, at that time. The Sox were finishing at, you know, 9.55, 10 o'clock, yeah. right, right at three hours. So I'd flip over to ESPN and I'd watch the, watch the hour show at 10 because they'd always have more extended highlights and stuff, you know, touch them all with 
the home run balls and then the web gems. I mean, it was that was one of my favorite shows, and it kind of went downhill, and now it's not even not even on. So, but anyway, we got another injured player on the field for the Hilltoppers. So it looks like Chris Tobar, number 26, who's an addition to the roster here. So uh, we're going to take another time. Oh no, maybe we won't. He's getting up. All right, we'll stick. We'll stick with it. We'll keep it here. We will keep it here. Toe bar on his feet, and we will continue play in just a couple seconds. So, looks like he's got some kind of injury to his right foot there, possibly a rolled ankle or a good old soccer cramp. Right, again, possible. I remember I saw him go down. I think he got tangled up. That's you know that's tough because as much grief as uh, soccer players get for uh, you know being actors or flopping and stuff like that. It's a good running joke about the sport, but it, it's a really, it's a very physical game once you get that into the nitty gritty long. of it. That one went too long, overshot the net. Had plenty of hang time, but just a little too far on the free kick. I thought only the uh, Montreal Canadiens flopped on the, you know. Oh wait, well <laughs> actually if you, uh, if, if you have if you have thirty seconds, you should you should look up the uh, I believe it's a World Cup commercial from the Italian team. Oh yeah, and it, it's it's gold because the, you know it's they're all lined up doing foot fire drills and the coach blows the whistle and they all drop to the ground and grab their ankle. You know the, it's it's a great and it was it's, a, it's a, you know the end of the commercial is FIFA World Cup two thousand you know eight or two thousand four or what have yeah, you. Yeah yeah yeah. It is just that's <laughs> hilarious. Golden. Not the only, uh, not the only sport where it benefits you to have a, a, a little bit of an acting career in you. Uh, oh yeah. Sees basketball more and more lately. They're able to sell the flop. Yeah, you know I have. Oh, oh man! Oh, God. that's not good. That's gonna be yeah, that ball painful. Just get kicked out of bounds. Yeah, landed right on the hip. Even the impact in the air, in the air didn't look yep. good. Yeah. Nope. And I thought he landed either on his arm or his wrist too. That's an ugly collision there. Was that? Kevin Barboza, did you happen to catch that number? I did not. No, sure. I did not. And I know Nathan is doing a great job with the close up, but there's too many guys around there. But this one, we will take a timeout. Um, we'll take an injury timeout here, and we'll be right back on Fred TV. Stay with us. Honor, courage, sacrifice, pride, our city. Fall River has traditionally been in the forefront of honoring our nation's soldiers, sailors, Marines, and airmen. Vietnam veterans took the initiative to secure rights to an 80% size replica of the Healing Wall for Veterans Bicentennial Park. The names of over 58,000 fallen heroes will be engraved on the 360 foot long replica wall. 100% of the money raised benefits the building of our Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall in Fall River. Help build our wall which is scheduled to open in 2020. The meaning, the spirit, and the value of the wall is everyone's. Be part of this exceptional, once-in-a-lifetime project. To make a donation, please visit vietnammemorialwall.org or connect with us at facebook.com. We're back here at Mac Aldridge Field, and uh, that was actually number seven, Lucas Fernandes, who went down. He's got an obvious limp, but he is walking off the field under his own power, and uh, he did get up as well under his own power. So good to see that. Hopefully he'll be okay for the boxers because that was one of the uglier collisions we've seen in quite some time. Now we have uh, Roman Codner holding the ball for the Hilltoppers. They're going to have a throw in on this side. Yep, that's, Not sure. That's just Durfee being, um, uh, how would you say, hospitable. Um, Brockton had to kick the oh, ball oh, out oh, oh. In, in order to, to get the ball, the game to stop. Gotcha. So if they could deal with the injured player, that's just Durfee returning the favor. Right. So it's Brockton ball. They're going to kick it away. Sportsmanlike. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I gotcha. Yeah, honestly, I, and that's a good call, Jake, because I didn't actually see the ball go out. I, I just saw the collision. I'm like, whoa. My eyes were glued to the to the collision zone, so 
usually nine nine times out of ten in in, in, um, in soccer the, the referees won't stop the won't stop the gameplay yeah. for an injury. So it, it's usually the players will take it upon themselves. The the uh, you know either the team with the injury or the team without the injury somebody will kick it out. And uh, I mean let's say Durfee had kicked the ball out so that time could be stopped for that Brockton player. Yeah. It would be. Um, you know, it would kind of be polite or it would be in, like, the folk ways of soccer to, to return the ball to Durfee, you know, even though Brockton had the injury. Sure. It's a beautiful game, you know. That's why, oh, that's yeah. That's why they called it. <laughs> <laughs> Boxer's trying to move the ball up the field. Working in the corner, heading towards the flag, and it goes out along the side. It's Miranda plugging up the middle again. You wish you had, you know, almost four guys back there. Mm -hmm. And the defense, you know, part of the success of Durfee last year, you know, you had Danny Keyes and Nilla Nera in the back. Oh, the who size. Size and, and just, you know, the veteran leadership, you know, starters basically, you know, through their whole career. No, I want to say they even had somebody on the left on the defense who may have been yeah, they around might have been. six feet as well. Uh, not Neil and Danny were yeah. both well over six feet, but I, I think the guys they had working the edges was still a pack in some size too. You're right, and I think you know it's like the rosters. You know, we we see so many teams, and it's like you, you hard hard to remember who's who or who was on what team. But I think you're right. There was one more big guy that they always had back there, and I'm I'm blanking now on his name. Yeah, I'm that's gonna sure. drive me nuts. Yeah, now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jake. Well, I can I can picture him too. I just can't. Think of the name. I'm also not sure if I'm picturing a kid from, uh, you know, the year prior. I, I did a lot of work with um, filming uh, oh, games around Nilan's you know, year. So. You may be thinking Nilan's junior here. They had um, I Ibrahim Naata. You remember yes, him? Yes. He oh, was, he was a big. He boy. was fun to watch. Let me tell you. And he was great in volleyball too. He gave mm -hmm. volleyball a shot, and he was a good weapon for Coach Brendan Kelly too. Yeah, Naata. That kid. It was an explosive player that was for a, soccer. That was another interesting year for these guys. Uh, yeah. Two years ago. I, I almost liked that team more than I liked watching them last year. I had more fun watching those guys. No, that was a great team. Um, they won their first playoff game here. That was the, the triple, o the, the double overtime, the shootout, yes. extra shootout. Yes. I mean, that was just uh, extra penalty kicks. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. I mean, I think we were up to five penalty kicks, maybe six. That was just absolutely insane. And then Durfee lost the next one, a, a winnable Silver game. Silver Lake, uh, that was, I. Uh, it was a winnable game. I actually, no, I, I really, I have to be honest with you. I think you, I don't think that was Silver Lake either. It, no, that was two years ago was Silver Lake in Silver Lake. Um, oh no, so th it was a home loss here. <clears throat> what? So that was two, two, two years ago? No, I'm, I'm referencing that particular season. I think that actually might've been three years ago. Maybe it was Nillen's sophomore year. It might have even been that. Free kick for the hill for the Hilltoppers here. Kucher's going to do it from about the 30. It's a good spot. Oh, it's going to be a little bit too high. Just a little too high. Um, we'll pull up the brackets now. We'll, we'll get to the bottom of it. I want to say 2016 was that particular game. I could be wrong, but I Maybe think 20, it was. 2019 now? We're in 2019. I want to say three. So let's see. Durfee, yep, Durfee beat Natick. That's what it was. Penalty kicks. Then they lost... And ironically, it was two versus 15, which is exactly what happened last year. Only last year, Natick beat us. So two, two to one in penalty kicks. Then they lost to Weymouth in overtime, a game they should have won here. Then in 2017, that was the Silver Lake one, I believe. No, no, so that would be, that would be two years ago. Yeah, two, I'm saying three years ago was the, three years ago is the one I'm talking about that was here against Natick, the extra penalty kicks. Durfee lost to Silver Lake oh, in penalty go. kicks as well. That was 2017, two falls ago. Because oh. then they lost last year to Natick again. Okay. Yeah. So Natick yeah. last year, Silver Lake on the road the year before, 2017. And then 2016, a win here, the penalty kicks, and then a loss here in overtime. So that. It was, yeah, there well, were two. I just they had two that you, didn't work, you didn't work any of those games here. Um, 2016, you you weren't you didn't do any games with no, us that maybe year. No, I was doing those with the uh, highlight guys. Mm -hmm. But I, I think just recall you were. that Silver Lake game being uh, particularly vicious. Oh it w yeah, oh I know and it the was. Referees were horrendous. Mm -hmm. 
That was yep. uh, poor Rui Almeida got, got a red card that game. Uh, coach, assistant coach Rui Almeida was handed a red card. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, the referees do need to keep, you know, control of the field. And I do think Coach Almeida was letting them know how he felt about a particular call. Um, yeah, I know that game was just all over the place, and there was a lot of a lot, lot of, of grumbling about it because it wasn't it was not a good. Uh, it was, definitely it was a, a good game, and there was a lot of emotion. It was a good game. I mean, four four to three, pe you know, penalty kicks. That's that's a tight game, and if if it's being affected by the officials, you got to let the guys play to an extent. Yeah, it's tough. I, I, I tell my guys in wrestling season a lot, uh, not so much during track, but I tell them during wrestling, you know, you're out there, you're wrestling against two opponents. You got, you know, the guy wearing the other singlet and then the guy in the striped singlet. You know, and the idea is to make it so that the guy in the striped singlet doesn't have a say in the outcome. Uh, right. You know. That's very, very true. 20 minutes gone in the second half. Only 20 minutes remain in this Durfee Brockton match, that's on the ground, and Massa scoops it up. Still 3 0 Brockton. Durfee has not been able to net a goal against Brockton this season. And this is a loss that um, you know, if the Hilltoppers don't pull off the miracle here, this is not going to help them in any way uh, as we get to its, toward the end of the season here. We'll uh, run down here the remaining schedule for Durfee. So they're going to be home on Friday against Somerset Berkeley. They uh, already played Somerset once this season. They tied them 1-1. Then they will travel to Taunton on Saturday. They lost to Taunton 4-1 here back at the end of September. Then Monday, senior night against Old Rochester. Massa able to get there for the save. Um, Old Rochester, they traveled to, to begin the season, a 1-1 draw. And then they will square off against Diamond at Diamond on Wednesday to wrap up the regular season. And I'm sure for many, what they hope won't just be the last game of the season, hoping that the boys will get into the tournament. The Diamond matchup back on September 23rd was a 2-2 tie as well. So Durfee against their final four opponents is 0-1-3. Uh, no wins to show for. A, a lot of a good chance to, uh, you know, write some, I don't want to say wrongs, but to, mm. to write some even matches there. They got three tied opponents, opponents that they have tied in the past. Now, do you know who the uh, the fourth opponent they had tied this year is? Oh, oh yeah, I'll, pull, I'll tell you right now. Um, it was, oh, it was BR. That was back on the 12th oh, this well, month. At B, and that was at Bridgewater Raynham. But the tie, you know, the ties do count for points. You get half a point for a tie. You get a, so you know half your games. Ideally, you win half your games and you're in. So 18 games, you need nine points. Um, but the ties factor in. So right now they got four points thanks to the four wins, and then two points because of the ties. So they have six points. With um, this game most likely not going to go their way. At least the odds would tell us that. It doesn't look Still, so. yeah, there's 17 minutes. A lot can happen in 17 minutes, but based on, again, trends and what's happened in this game so far, I wouldn't expect it. So let's just see Durfee drops to 4, 6, and 4 here. That leaves them with two games to pick up three points, which basically at worst means they need to win two and tie two. Yeah, That's pretty much the worst you can do. You can't lose a game no. after tonight or you're done. That's That's pretty much... That's pretty much the uh, the best way to put it, and it'll break up a run of uh, playoff berths. You know, the last three years they've been in it, they've been in the tournament, and uh, I want to say they were in in 2015 as well. I'm gonna we're gonna go back here. Another shot on net wide to the left. We'll go back and take a look at our brackets here. 2015, yep, Durfee was 11-4 and three. 2014. Not Division Two, Division One. Drifty ten, three, and five. So that's five years in a row. Twenty thirteen. Twenty thirteen was the last time the Drifty was not in the tournament. They have made it into the tournament in each of the last five seasons. That's a great run. So that streak in jeopardy here 
And uh, again, tonight's game not helping the cause for Durfee. Yeah, they're really going to have to. they got to dig deep. Yeah. And, you know, they've got opponents that they can beat. Taunton's probably going to be their toughest one. Mm -hmm. oh, and, you know, and Diamond, to be fair. I mean, Diamond's, well, Diamond's Diamond had one heck do. of a season. So, you know. We can only, I mean, what we really need to hope for there is that we get some of this uh, this Brockton, you know, uh, strength of schedule magic that will yeah. help these guys out against Diamond. Although, you know, Diamond being another far of a school, I'm sure plenty of these guys in this field have shared a field with the oh, yeah. people from Diamond, whether, uh, you know, uh, on the same team or, or playing against each other. So it's not like they're going to be going into this game completely blind. Yeah, well, so, and that's the whole thing is, that, you know, I, I look at, you know, Somerset, Diamond, they were ties. Right, Old Rochester was a tie. So when I see a tie, I figure, well, it probably could have gone either way, right? I mean, if it's 1-1 mm -hmm. or a 5-5, five, five, might as well be nothing-nothing because nothing, either way, it's a draw. Um, you know, so could it have gone either way. Massa swats it away. Boy, he's been busy, and he's had some nice saves. Here's a second chance, and it's going to go wide left. That's Those are the kind of plays Derby needs to get. They yeah. need, to, need to get a 1-2 you know, punch in there. And we haven't seen that tonight. We haven't seen that. We, we've barely even seen them you know, get close to the net, which, you know, it's, it stinks. The home team league matchup, a, a game that you really need. And, and like I said earlier, a game that they really thought that they could hang in and, uh, you know, be dominant. I mean, not dominant, but, but hang in there, come out with a tie or even a win, but... It's not in the cards tonight. These boxes came to play. They sure did, and uh, looking like they're going to improve and grab their 12th win. It'll be 12 and 5 and 0 oh with one to play. That Good one shot right into the net. Wow! Top 90, right corner. Went by Massa, Massa looking. That's Derek Brito could not place that any better. And I don't think Zach even thought it was going to make it in. It curled back in because he kind of gave up on it. And Mazda does not give up on any balls. No. That was perfect placement for the fourth goal of the night for Brockton. That, yes. I, that's probably one of the prettiest goals. That, you know, you saw the great pass in, in the first half. That perfect feed right through the shoot, right through the middle, like threading the needle. And now you see a, a goal like that. I mean, you can't place it much better. And I'll tell you, if that's what what Brockton does consistently, they're going to be tough in the bracket because they're going to the tournament. And they're going to—I think they're going to be a force. That was just such a tremendous goal from Brito. Yeah, and that's that's just that's those opportunities finally paying off. You know, he's taking that maybe not the exact same shot, but he's he's had that attempt a couple of times tonight, mm -hmm. and it finally connected in a beautiful way. Whistle blown. I didn't see much there, to be honest with you. Well, it might have just been something small. So, you know, sometimes yeah. these guys play the man instead of playing the ball. You know, they... Right. And, uh, you know, you know, soccer, you can almost get away with anything as long as you're trying to get after the ball. You make contact with the ball first. But, you know, sometimes you don't. And sometimes you hit a man. Yeah, and that's... So it was Giovanni Martins, their number 14 who got tagged with that foul. Another foul, this one will go uh, against the Hilltoppers. Yeah, I'm not sure what that one was. Maybe an offside call, I don't know. So Dos Santos, thought he was gonna send it down the field instead, hooks up De Silva. Now, well, that one's going back, but De Silva did a block it with the chest. Derpy should really be in a full court press uh, mode now, especially that deep in the boxer side of the field. Right, and, um, that, and again, we're just not really seeing that, and I don't know if it's a combination of the elements or if the defense is just really that tough right now for Brockton, but Durfee has not been able to catch a break. You know, one of the guys that you tend to see get a bit of a break is Kucher. Uh, no, well, Kucher and um, Nicholas De Silva. De Silva has had some really good games this year, and, and you know he's gotten a lot of breaks as well. I haven't seen much of him at all tonight. He hasn't been hasn't had much of an impact on the game. So Brockton's really kind of shut him down too. And, and and to be honest with you, I don't think he's. I don't even see him on the field right now. No, I don't think he's not even on the field. 
Durfee's forwards just really need to pester the defense while they're down here, force them to make some mistakes and just, you know, get some easy shots on net. They, they really need some cheap goals. <laughs> Pretty much. And in fact, uh, we see quite a few, there's quite a few subs, guys who, did, guys who did not start, um, who are on the field right now for the Hilltoppers. So coach made some changes. I'm seeing Codner out there. I'm seeing Ethan Machado. So resting some of the regular starters here with the game basically out of reach here with 10 minutes to go. Saw a little jersey pulling. Yeah. Some holding might, you don't want to see too much of that. It might, might be the explanation of why these boxer guys have a little bit of an edge on our Derby guys, but I doubt it. Sometimes these things happen late in the game because oh, yeah. you know, people are getting tired and you don't want to give up that extra step. You'll do what you got to do. Well, and I'm sure there's some frustration for the Hilltoppers, too, on top of it, because, you know, this has been two bad games against Brockton, two games that are important games. going out of play. Jake's going to step out for a sec here. One of our Fred TV kids, Nor Issa. Just got back with her Lady Hilltoppers. See if we can get a score here from uh, their road match. We're under 10 minutes to play here at Mac Aldridge Field. Oh, they lost. We don't have a score, though. So, tough night for the Lady Hilltoppers on the road. It is. Those poor girls have had a tough season. They have, and I'll tell you, though, they, they have really competed. You know, I, when I saw their record, the first time we got to cover them, it was pretty much midseason because they had so many road games to start the year. And, um, you know, when I saw that they only had the one win, I said, boy, it's been a bad season. They've really had it, had it rough. But, you know, you have to take into account that you know, records don't always show the whole story. And I thought that the ladies had a really strong game in their New Bedford matchup. I mean, they lost that game, but they competed. I was really impressed. Um, and I think that for a young team, considering that they, Durfee did not have a JV program for girls soccer this year, uh, the varsity team is young. And uh, I was really, I was impressed. I know that they lost the game, but I was impressed with how they played, and I know that they're only going to get better because we've seen that in other sports that have struggled. And, you know, once they get over the hump and they they get past kind of the the youngness, if you will, you know, things tend to turn around as they get more and more playing time. And I, I really didn't think they played that badly. Look at the speed up the field for Martins as he gets there before it goes out of play, and he's going to end up getting the corner kick out of it. Yeah, that, that girls' soccer team, I, I know a handful of them just from around the building. They're, they're all great girls. They all play hard. I've seen a handful of their games. And, um, you know, it's it's almost looks like this Brockton boxer team. They, they have control of the ball. Right. You know, they, they're getting shots on net, and they just can't. They're not getting the ball quite in there, whether it's, you know, they're not getting directly on target or the goalie's there or some defender happens to be in the right place. Uh, I saw two of their games, and they, they – we're in com control of the game and not the scoreboard, which I think, you know, it's, it's tough. And like you said, these girls are young. They're going to get better. But that you hit the nail on the head, and, and that's exactly right. Is they had their last game that we covered, um, they had chance after chance after chance after chance. And it was, like, frustrating to a point even to watch because – I've never seen a team with so many breaks in a game. Yep. And then they got outpowered in the last second or they couldn't finish it off. And I mean, believe me, it was frustrating to watch because you're seeing these chances say, wow, a team would die for this many chances. Mm -hmm. Just the opportunities alone. Right. And then they, um, unfortunately, they just weren't able to put it in. And, and again, with experience, with growth, you know, you talk, if that happens two years, if that was two years later and that was happening, you're probably looking at a five-goal game. Yes. Oh, you, you know what I mean? So um, 
so it, it's frustrating, but the the good news is that they're gonna they're gonna get better um, as it goes. And uh, you know, Coach Ami, it was nice to meet her this season. Glad that she's part of the Hilltopper family, and uh, hopefully she'll you know hopefully she'll be back next year. Well, hopefully those girls can get some numbers on that squad too, because yeah. I, I don't think they have a JV team this year, and they're no, they playing uh, you know uh, an eleven an eleven team uh, an eleven player game with. 13, maybe 14 players on that roster. Yeah. Those yeah, it's a small, tired, you know? small roster. And in fact, they have an eighth grader. They got a basically yeah. an injunction um, that they, they have one of the one of the eighth graders from middle school actually playing on the team. And uh, she was wicked fast. Let me tell you, she was quick. So <laughs> she's going to be uh, a player for a while for the Hilltoppers. I got to tell you, I'm in favor of this new, um, you know, eighth grade kind of a uh, pull up program. Yeah. Well, I'm way more in favor of that than I am uh, seeing uh, guys in girls' sports and girls in guys' sports. Oh, well, certainly. But I, it's uh, the cross-country team, Joe Lamar, has got himself two eighth graders. One of them, I'm not totally sure her name. I think it's Margaret O'Donnell. But she is uh -huh. a phenomenal runner, just yeah. natural talent. She's actually been pulling in a whole bunch of first place um, races this year. Uh, actually, I shouldn't say that, but she's... I don't know exactly, you know, where she's landing in these races, but she's doing well. She's outperforming, you know, kids in high school. And uh, Good. You know, I'm looking forward to her freshman year on track. But fortunately, I guess she's a big three-sport athlete. We might we might be competing with, uh, what's, yeah, she might end up playing soccer right here. Ah. It's all right. I wouldn't mind getting her. Well, she's building up that base, though, for running. That's running she around the field indeed. for 80 minutes. That's a good thing. <laughs> Well, That's you know, a good some, thing. A lot of these kids, they got to explore some different options. You know, maybe um, you might enjoy soccer and running around a lot, but you might have a better option of, of you know, seeing some financial aid for sports if you uh, mm. use that running ability in a different way. Right. And, you know, and that's kind of, you, know, you mentioned, you know, track. And, you know, I mentioned uh, for Diamond that Maya Parker, you know, she played soccer and she was fast for soccer and she's sustaining out in the field for 80 minutes. Then she gets on a basketball court, which is what, maybe – a six, eighty feet, I maybe believe, you yeah. know, an eighth of the size of a soccer field, and she's got that base. The game is quicker; it's a shorter game, and she's got that base from soccer. I mean, it's no wonder she was the fastest one on the court. No, yeah, you know, it's it, you know, it all translates across the board. It makes a huge difference. Um, I still have to say though, and I remember um, Diamond softball coach and girls volleyball coach Kathy Noversa, who played here at Durfee softball. She was a hilltopper. Um, she said once in an interview, and I know I've brought this up before too. But, you know, we we got our merge, the big three and old colony, no more big three. So that's a step in the right direction. Now she w she was asked, I remember, by Greg Sullivan of the Herald News in this coach's profile, said if there's one thing you could change, that you could just change it and that's it, and just move on from that change without any issues or anything, and, and just do it. What would it be? And she said, Well, that's easy. Baseball and softball in the fall. Soccer moved to the spring. Oh, I would love that. Who would not if like I was this? A, if I was a now, soccer player, there's a lot. But that. Now, the thing is, is there are a lot of variables. Number one being that there are a lot of football players that play baseball. And that's the game. Wow, that's the game. You know? Oh, my God. But, um, you know, we'll finish the thought here and we'll continue it another day. But basically, you know, think about it. You have the summer leagues. The summer leagues are almost can be almost like spring training. You know, for, for baseball, softball, who are typically training in a gym because there's still snow on the ground in March. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the, and the games are just miserable. Soccer could put, this could be March, what we're looking at right now. Baseball can't play in this, but soccer could play in this right now. Totally. <laughs> this, <laughs> you know? This is peak season for a lot of the premier outside of high school um, soccer leagues, mm -hmm. the more premier young young men's leagues. This is, fall is when they're, you know, they're right. putting up their best numbers in. They could play through spring and summer, and just as baseball is like a preparation. Right. You know, but you then, then the you have, there. then there's the argument, though, too, is that, well, then what about all the travel teams that typically have spring soccer? Well, and, I, and again, I get that, but why not? All right, so make a travel team in the fall. They have, they have it in the fall as well. Right. I, I played for I uh, would I would love to see that, because I'll tell you one thing. It would, I mean, think about it. Baseball, the spotlight comes for baseball in the, you know, in the fall when you get the World Series and the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Um, and I really, truly believe that you'd get more games in without problems and with better weather 
if you're doing it in the fall. Well, ba- Derpy's baseball field probably wouldn't be so much of an issue if we're, if we're not having games <laughs> right. in the rainy season. <laughs> right, During right. monsoon season here in Massachusetts. Sure. Well, hey, all good food for thought, and we'll uh, we'll talk more about it because there's still fall sports to be played here um, in Fall River. So, Jake, glad that you joined me. This was a lot of fun. And uh, if we get a soccer playoff game, which I know we definitely will for Diamond, but uh, hopefully we will for Durfee here. But, again, they got a tough road ahead. Hilltoppers drop to 4, 6, and 4. Brockton improves to 11, I'm sorry, 12, 5, and 0 oh after the 4 nothing win here. And with four games left, the Hilltoppers, at worst, can win two and tie two to get into the tournament. They cannot lose a game the rest of the way or they're going to be eliminated from the tournament uh, for the first time in five years. So we wish Durfee the best of luck the rest of the season here. We will have, again, senior night ceremony coverage on Monday. And um, But other than that, in terms of full games for the regular season, we're done here with boys soccer. So uh, we saw a couple good games, a couple tough games like tonight. And uh, you know, we wish them the best in their final four games. So for Daniel Keating and Nathan Saucier, my broadcast partner tonight, Jake Fitzgerald, I'm Evan Massoud saying so long from Durfee High School.